different conventions and trade shows. She's also the owner of Pearl House, uh, a venue in Atlanta. So, Vivi, thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure to be here, Julie. Thanks so much, and hi, everybody. Yes, yes. Well, um, why don't we go through just a little bit of, uh, I think it's important to kind of start off with some of the bad experiences you've had as far as vendors coming to your venue to get referrals. Let, let's kind of start there. <laughs> Well, if I could step off a little bit, I like to differentiate. Um, I'm glad that uh, the vernacular in our culture is changing from vendor to wedding professional. Um, I know that we still use the word vendor a lot, but that always makes me think of an organ grinder and a monkey, and nothing's wrong with that, but, but to differentiate that if people are tuning in, they're clearly wedding professionals, and they're wanting to build a successful commercial business that, uh, that, that, that uh, you know, has positive cash flow and that serves clients, uh, customers, and guests at a high level. Um, so I think in the, in the same vein in, in our talk today, to really look at um, how do we begin to create best practices within our company, and this is what I work on with companies across the United States, to be able to generate business and to refer business to one another and to do it in the most professional way. Um, yeah, there are lots of stories of people doing less than that. One of my pet peeves is going to a networking and, um, you know, I've got a, a glass of wine in one hand and a purse in the other and there's loud music and somebody comes up to me and says, oh, you're, you're, um, uh, who, are, uh, what's your name? B.B. Webb. And, oh, you're with that company, right? Uh, the, a venue. And they, they haven't done their research. They start going on about their company um, and throw a bunch of cards in my hand. And that's, that's not the most ideal way to introduce yourself as a professional and to ask, frankly, for another professional to refer business to you. But I'll go over today um, steps and practices that we've put in place at Carl House and whether we're um, referring somebody or whether we're asking for a referral back. Uh, yes, we did. We did one time. There was a wedding uh, planner who had wanted to um, uh, do some business with us and, and, and came into my venue. And we're, we're just not a flip-flop kind of place. <laughs> you can see behind. It's our ballroom at Carl House. But, but yeah, if, 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 you're, if you're actually going to meet with somebody for a referral, it's, it's really important that you know what their business is, the culture in their business, their practices, and to, to mirror that. If, if, and, uh, you know, if we were a Lululemon store, you know, we might come in athletic gear or something, but we're Carl House, and it's a different look and feel. It's, more, uh, it's a little bit more formal than that. And uh, so coming in flip-flops wasn't really appropriate for our culture. So you, it's really important that if you're whoever you're looking to do business with, that you've read their website, you understand who they are, and you really need to look at how can you also be a benefit to them. And I'll go through some steps on how we do that as well, Julie. Okay. Well, Bibi, I think I'm just going to let you take it away right <laughs> okay. now. And, okay. Uh, for those that are joining us before uh, Julie talks, we're going to go over to Bibi. Please make sure that you share this broadcast also with your other followers on Facebook so that other wedding professionals can gain this valuable knowledge that Bibi is going to be giving us today. And so, um, if you have questions, uh, we hope that you will hold those until the end. And so now I'm going to go ahead and let Bibi take over. And I love your, you're my alter ego behind me. We're very creative uh, technology, Julie. Well, thanks, everybody. You know, I, one thing I, I realized that in, in doing business, and we've been in business at Carl House for 13 years, is that, um, you know, you, you're really only as good as the people you surround yourself with. So that if you are referring somebody or they're referring you, you want to make sure that you're reflecting as professionally, uh, your image as professionally as, as possible. And, and really that people, it's the old adage, people do business with people they respect and people who they admire. And I guess I want to add, if there's any big takeaway uh, today, is that when you're looking to refer somebody or ask someone for referrals, you really want to make sure that it's a win-win. And that can happen in a, in a number of different ways. And the key is, too, the whole point behind referrals is we want to build business for one another. And, um, you know, as much as we want to give the best service and the best, um, or, you know, we have a great product, my father was an entrepreneur, and he had a, a great expression that he would share with me frequently where he said, you know, honey, money isn't everything, but it does rank right up there with oxygen. 
So referrals and aligning with the right people is a very important way to grow that cash flow in your business because if you don't have it, you can't create the jobs, you can't serve the people who you want to at a very, very high level. I think that there's enough business for all of us out there, but it's important how we align and with whom. And I, I like to really start in our business, part of our culture is a, a real pay it forward approach that if, if I know that if I'm doing something good for someone else, um, more often than not, that's going to come back to me. But that there was a, a wedding planner had asked a question, why do people always come to me to ask for referrals? Well, as a venue or a wedding planner, we're kind of at the top of the food chain. Uh, couples typically come to us first, and then we have the advantage of being able to share our knowledge with, about different people with whom we've worked. But it's important, too, as a venue, we have arrangements with different folks who we work with, that we ask for them to do some things for us too. I'll give you an example. We work with a wonderful DJ at Carl House and we love to refer him business because he makes us look good. He's aligned with our culture and our values at Carl House. But he also said, listen, I want to do something for you. And at the end of each event, he would, he would interview the couple and he would say, as a third party endorsement, he'd say, tell me, how did you like the wedding? How did you like the venue? How was the food? How was the staff? You know, setting us up for success. He, you know, obviously positive comments and, and the positive comments that we could put as a third party endorsement in our social media. It's a lot different than me saying, gosh, we have great food. We have really wonderful service. I'm the owner. It, you know, it's, it's different when there's somebody else who's saying it, when your client is ra a raving fan talking about your service. So if you are a planner or if you are a venue, you can make arrangements with the different people with whom you want to, to, to work. And we do have a process. When people approach us at Carl House, or for instance, the young woman who might come to me in a networking, and she's maybe not as savvy about a more professional approach, I think that as stewards in this, in this industry, we need to help one another in how to, to get to the place of best practices and to be professional. And my response to her might be, hey, listen, you know, we have a process for that. If you could take down this email, Kimberly at our company, she manages all the folks who, who are wanting to maybe do some, some business with us. And then they email us and talk with Kimberly, and we do have a process. We, uh, we really look to see if, if, um, um, if they're really, uh, you know, who they are. We, we, take, we do references if they come in and we want to find out about them. We, we take references. We look at their website. We like to experience their work. Um, we really want to get a sense of them because if I or one of my team members is referring somebody, we want to make sure that they're representing our brand in a very good way because it also puts my reputation and my name um, at risk too if I'm referring somebody who doesn't have the level of professionalism that we at least strive for and so that it's a really good, it's a win-win fit. So we like to experience as much as we can about, about that person. And um, we, we have different times of the year when we consider new people to put on our preferred list. But you might even look at, aside from being at the top of the food chain as a vendor or, excuse me, as a wedding professional or a venue, you might, if, if you're referring, um, you're a person who makes beautiful cakes, maybe you know a photographer who's wonderful, you might make different arrangements together on how you refer one another because we're all really selling to the same person. And the more we can come around, we're really a team in creating this beautiful event for, so, for, for folks. You want to make sure that it's really a win-win. We also have some arrangements with um, folks uh, where, where we work on a commission basis. And usually when we do that, um, for instance, we had a cakery that we worked with that we shared about 80% mm, of uh, our lead, or, excuse me, of our customers did business with them. So that constituted for a good part of their profit for each year. So we had worked on a commission basis because in essence we were being their sales and marketing arm. And when you consider, when we look at our marketing budget at Carl House, every call or email that comes in costs us about $250. So if we're leveraging a little bit of that and sending those same leads of people who've booked with us to uh, another wedding professional, it only makes sense that maybe they help defray that cost a little bit with a commission. It's not a fit for everybody, but with that, we also at Carl House came up with some other things that we thought would be a win. And um, uh, with that, we uh, include some people on the website. 
or we might hand out their literature to a bride. We might give them a special pricing at our bridal events that we hold. Or um, we have a beautiful publication that goes out to every couple that comes into our venue, whether they book with us or not. And they have an opportunity at a nominal cost to, to put an ad in there. So there's creative ways that you can create a win-win. Also, um, we've had arrangements with some wedding professionals where a photographer who we work with said, hey, listen, if they book with you, I'd like to offer that I will, I will extend a complimentary engagement session if they book me as well. So again, there's some very cost-effective creative ways that you can create incentives that are a total win-win. It's a win for us because as a venue, we're offering something special to the couple, but also we're, we're helping to garner more business for that wedding professional. So I think that you know, there's, there's, no, there's no end to the, dis, the creative mixes that you can create. We also have arrangements with um, some of our, uh, our quote, competitors. Uh, we were, there was a, a group called the Lunch Bunch that was started by the, uh, the folks at Payne Corley here in the Atlanta area. And I love it. We all get together as venue owners or people who work at venues, and we talk about how can we help each other. Best practices, because there's lots of business out there. We each have our own you know, unique personality. But um, we also started doing referrals that if we have a booked date, and if I know that another, event, uh, another wedding professional or if you're a photographer, if another photographer has that date booked, you might refer somebody who has a similar quality attention to detail, or the branding is similar to yours that you might refer. So imagine, you know, if, if you're in front of a certain amount of people and there's another photographer in, a, in front of a certain amount of people, how do you leverage that to help each other? So again, I think it's just being really professional, it's being really creative, and it's asking, what can I do for you to help grow your business? I'll give you one other example. When I was building Carl House 13 years ago, uh, John Campbell, uh, still a dear friend, he's a photographer in the area. I was in construction mode and I was beginning to book brides and um, but we, the place was still unbuilt and he came, the ballroom wasn't one, yet done, it was a muddy, rainy, cold day and I had on my mucklucks and it's raining and he came up because he had heard and he had set up an appointment to come visit me. I said, I'm going to be in mucklucks, we're in the middle of construction. He came up with a hot cup of coffee. Starbucks coffee it tasted so good. I was so cold. And he looked at the whole operation. He said, you know what? I'd like to help you. I said, really? That would be great. <laughs> you know, we're in the middle of construction trying to figure out this business. And he said, once you get everything done, I would like to photograph every room. I'd like to photograph the whole place. So you have representative shots on your website. He didn't ask for credit on the website, which of course we gave him, but he really wanted to pay it forward and demonstrate that he wanted to work with me as a partner. And that meant a great deal to me, and we did lots of business together for years. Um, I'm going to cough a second. Julie, you want to ask a question? Not necessarily. I mean, if we've seen their work and they've been highly recommended, um, it's, like, it's really like hiring an employee in many ways. If we feel comfortable from what we've seen, because we do a lot of research, and again, with the references, we try to uh, be at an event where we can experience or look online. Sometimes if we do want to experience their work first, uh, we do a lot of marketing events at, at Carl House, so we might ask them to come in, and, and we pay a lot for the marketing events. Obviously, we pay for the, the food and the, the, the labor, everything else. We might ask them to donate their time to also get in front of a crowd that they could potentially sell to. So that's another way that we get to see how they work with our team. Because we have had some instances where we've worked with people, and um, one of the poo-poos is you don't ever want to throw anyone under the bus. There's always things that happen in any event, but as wedding professionals, behind the scenes, we need to make sure that we're banding together. And, and often we'll talk afterwards if something could have been different or better. We'll talk about how do we align together to make sure that, that the, the, the client doesn't see that. But you don't you know, obviously want to throw anyone under the bus. But we do our research ahead of time, and we don't necessarily ask them to do two events um, beforehand before adding them to our list. Yeah. Okay. Hi, Christine. She was asking, what would be a fair commission? Oh. Um, you know, she said margins are already tight. So yeah. what, what are your thoughts? 
sure. I think that depends. And, and if it's a commission, it could be a commission of labor uh, that they mention you on social media. It could be a commission of uh, donating cakes to a marketing event that you're doing, something like that. Um, we've had commissions anywhere from 15% to a referral fee. I think it's so um, individual to, again, like you said, the margins. And, and again, I remember when I first uh, approached somebody who was actually getting a, a lot of business from us, and we said, listen, we, we would like to defray our cost a little bit. Again, it's, it's, it's a business. If somebody can see the value of being given X number of dollars of business a year, you can kind of work backwards and say, what is that worth for that person? So uh, really, it's, it's so uniquely tailored to each individual situation. We only did that with a couple of people who we really gave a lot of the business because they also gave a lot back to us in return and made us look so good, and it was a win-win. Um, I've even had situations where it's a win-win for a while as somebody's trying to build business, but once they're getting more business on their own and don't need us perhaps as much, we stop that arrangement. So I think it's really, I like to create contracts, I like to, I like to create expectations, and to review them regularly to say, does this still work? Because if it doesn't, then you need to, you need to shift it. And business is always shifting. There's always new ways to do things. So I think communication is really key. And again, coming back to that win-win. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting that you talked about the win-win because one of the questions mm -hmm. before we even started this broadcast for you uh, was actually from a wedding planner. She says, you know, she had all these wedding professionals that want, um, you know, to have her refer them. But she feels like it's not a win-win right. because they don't necessarily, you know, always ask other people, do you have a wedding plan? You know, she, she you know, if she's going to refer business, then we've got to refer them as well. Well, I think that that's a negotiation and that before we assume, well, I wish they did that. Well, yeah, I wish that we had 10 more clients, you know, coming in a week. You've got to go get it. You've got to create your own luck. And uh, if that's what you want, then you need to build the relationship and say, for instance, we work with various hotels. We give them tons of business. Well, somebody, one of my salespeople said, I wish they'd refer business to us. I said, why don't you go over and ask that? Why don't you go say, hey, look, we noticed that da-da-da, there's this number of dollars of business. We're so happy to send it to you. You do such a great job. Hey, how would you feel about... Um, you know, you have corporate people who come in. Could we make an arrangement that we talk monthly? You could let us know some of the corporate people. You've got to ask for what you want. You can't expect people to read your mind. We're all, busy, we're all busy building our own businesses. But if you can create an arrangement and then accountability, it's like working with any kind of an employee. You've got a job. You've made an agreement. Then to make sure, is this person following through? And if they're not, then it's like, hey, maybe this isn't a fit. Because I know I've had situations like that, a commission situation, and it was on the honor system, and we noticed that there was a lot of business coming in for this one particular wedding professional, but they weren't honoring the agreement. And I said, well, this was a business agreement. That's when I went to having it more written down so you can say, hey, look, this is, what, this is how much business came in. We're tracking it. This is the agreement we made. And let's keep doing the agreement and be accountable to it until it doesn't work any longer. And if it doesn't, then we can make other arrangements. But just being very clear, and I'd say in writing, it's a, it's a business. Yeah. Good, right. good question. Yeah. Good yeah, questions. So true. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Sally, thank you so much for joining the Wedding Market Broadcast. Um, Sally wanted to know do you refer vendors outside of your area? Outside of my area? Well, I've never been asked that, Sally. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> question. Um, I guess if I knew about them, I could. I mean, and not only that, it, it, it doesn't need to be just people within in our industry. I like to study what other businesses do, and I consult and act as a business coach uh, to businesses around the country. And um, there's other businesses, for instance, um, outside of the industry and the people who work specifically on events who you might garner some some um, referrals from. You might go back to former raving fan clients and ask for referrals too. I think that there's, there's just lots of opportunities and to also learn from how other businesses do referral. I don't think referral is just giving someone a name, but it's also following up afterwards and saying, hey, listen, how did, how did that person work out for you? Or did so-and-so ever call you? I sometimes, in the middle of a sales appointment, if I'm working with my, my team, if there's somebody, a, a great, for instance, DJ or cake person who I think they should talk to, or they have a, something special about their event, I'll call the phone right there and say, hey, 
to that DJ. I've got, I've, got, I've got Jennifer here. I think you would be a great fit and this is why. So they know, they, they know and you demonstrate with a client there that you are actually really working on their behalf. People tend to do that back to you. So also in an email, if it's copying, you know, you're referring and it's an introduction, so that there's a paper trail that you could go back and say, hey, these are 10 people who I referred your way. How did any of those work out? But you're also demonstrating that you are working on their behalf to help get them business, and people then tend to want to do that for you as well. Good, good question. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Sandra has also joined us today. I'm Hello. glad that Sandra has joined us. Uh, she had a question is saying, are you transparent to your clients that your refer list is, you know, is paid? Uh, is the perception is that you are endorsing this mentor, and while you may... Uh, bet them. The reality is, is they are on your list because they are paying for it. But I, I guess her question uh, is about I understand. transparency. I guess absolutely. It's it's honestly it's really nobody's business because it's it's sort of like saying I want to know how your business practices work, and I'm perfectly transparent about it if they ask. It, um, but but in in a way that's a little bit like asking, um, you know, how do you come up with your pricing? How do you do your marketing? What is it that you spend on that you think is important to grow your business? Which really it kind of isn't anybody's business, but certainly if somebody asked, we'd say, gosh, yes, we're a sales and marketing arm for this company. And I put my name and my reputation on it, and I wouldn't refer them without that. But yes, we are a sales and marketing arm for them. But we want most of all that you to make the decision, client, couple, that they're the right fit for you. We endorse them because we believe in them. And, and trust me, the amount, a small amount of commission defrays our marketing budget a very small amount. So that's, you know, it's not a driving factor. Um, but yeah, in the same way we might say, gosh, we love this person too. And he does such a great job of spreading the word about us. Because at the end of the day, it's about growing business so we can serve more people. I think it's how you position it. Um, you have to remember, and this is what sets us apart from, I think, people who are hobbyists in the field. We're a business and we're trying to grow really good business. And for us, I know at Carl House, we have a very discerning culture, a vision, and a mission on how we do business. And part of that is, if we are not profitable, I can't serve people at the level that, that I need to. So we try to be creative in that, and I think the whole referral process is a very creative way to, and for a nominal fee or, or a nominal commitment to be able to grow your business. Because again, it's just who you surround yourself with. So certainly if somebody asks to be totally transparent about it. Yeah, that's a great question. Yeah. Now, both of us will be at the Wedding MBA this year. What, yeah. Uh, what will you be speaking on at the Wedding MBA? Oh, do you have that note in front of me? Curbside appeal, I think that's what it's called. Um, I'll be talking to venue owners about how do you highlight the most beautiful parts of your venue and the parts that maybe aren't as pretty, for instance, like the, the car shop across the street from Carl House? How do we guide people's attention toward the beautiful parts and maybe the parts, the aspects that you really can't control around your venue? Or how do you make, how do you make for curbside appeal? And then the other talk is called Vanishing Act. And I'm going to be talking about the, the somewhat lost art of really effective communication and maybe the do's and don'ts around texting and email and where sometimes, especially in this new generation, sometimes where it's really good to pick up the phone or to do you know, a Skype chat where somebody can see your facial expression, hear the tone of your voice, and, and some of the do's and don'ts to really build the kind of business you want, to build the rapport so you can build the trust with your clients and serve people at that very high level as wedding professionals. Yeah, I'm very excited. I love speaking at M a wedding MBA. And you'll be there too, Julie, right? Yes, yes, I will. Good. Yeah, well, um, where can they find more information about your company? Okay. Well, at Carl House, um, we actually just uh, we launched a new website. It's uh, carlhouse.com, C-A-R-L, house.com. And um, please look at our, Kimberly's behind the camera here. What's it called, Kimberly? Our newest... Insider tips, oh, all kinds of social media that, that Kimberly, our marketing director, creates to give brides and grooms uh, some expert advice. And then my uh, speaking and my coaching work, uh, my writing work is found at arrivingwithbbweb.com. And you can see all of my different social media. But uh, if I can help anyone in any way, this is what we love to do. And uh, 
We're all in this together, and the more we can help each other, pay it forward, be creative and innovative, there's so much business out there for all of us, and it's so great at the end of the day to know that you're building a commercial profitable business and also serving people at a high level. Yeah. Thank you so much, Julie. Um, it's always fun to visit with your group and, and to speak, and um, thank you. Right. Thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Julie.